90 centimeters. So the square root of that is 3. And the square root of this is 2y. As it was, 72 minus 32y squared, you'd have trouble factoring those as a difference of squares because it is not a difference of squares, right? So since it's y squared, you divide it all by whatever, like, um, um, do you, like, for all of it, do you make it get squared, like, root thing? Or, like, I don't know how to explain it because, I guess, maybe let's talk about, are you talking about between here and here? Yeah. Like, okay. Why would you do that for like all? I'm just basically kind of wondering like, why do you do it for 92, even though it kind of seems, I don't know, it just seems kind of awkward to me for some reason. Do it for nine as well. Yeah, I don't know why it seems off, because two is already, like why before the square makes sense. Yeah, yeah. To me it seems kind of off, like why would you do nine in those? Like what makes that need to be done? Is it the square part of why? Or for, for nine, to to be three and three? No, I mean, why do you need to square nine at all? That's what I'm trying to explain. Just square nine. I'm trying to, I don't know how to explain it. Like, why do you need to find a square root for nine? Well, I mean, that that's the way the difference of squares pattern works out. Uh, I guess, let me try and answer it this way by just multiplying this by that. Yeah, you get negative positive four y. Oh, sorry, negative four y squared. I get yeah. that for that one, but I'm saying, what in that, like the top one, eight, nine, all that, what in there makes that nine need to be broken down more, like the three, three? What would it look like, how would this look different if we didn't do that? Would it look like a nine and a nine? Again, I don't know, it just seems, that's where I'm kind of confused on, like what in there made it have to be? Is it just the square part of the y, the four y that did that? Well, I don't know how to give that a good answer other than the reason, the, the ultimate reason we're doing any of these things is I need two sets of parentheses that will multiply back together to give me that parentheses. Like just kind of ignoring the eight for a second, I need these two to multiply back together to make that one. But then can we just do nine and one? Again? Oh, can we just do yeah, nine and one? All right. It's still like, so the ultimate test is, will it multiply together to make this again? Let's find out. Okay, so we'll uh, actually put it back the way it should be, and then we'll just kind of work over on the side and see, does it work or does it not work? So we got eight times nine. Well, what will happen? Because um, you'll have to know. Because one will be higher than the other one. They won't be the same. They won't, then the middle term won't cancel out. All right. Yeah. That's why like these have to be nearly identical, differing only by a, the sign in the middle. All right. I think I was just overthinking that. That's what I'm thinking. Okay. I don't know what happened. Okay. Okay. I get it now. So just for, I don't know, in, in case anybody's wondering the same thing, but they're remaining quiet, so I'm just going to go ahead and multiply this out. 9 times 1 is 9. 9 times negative 2y is negative 18y. And then 2y times 1 is plus 2y and 2y times negative 2y is negative 4y squared. So we get the 9, we get the negative 4y squared, but see the middle we get the negative 18y plus 2y is just negative 16y. In order to get that middle term to cancel, the only way the two numbers are gonna to cancel together, or add together, and just kind of completely cancel each other out is if they're exactly opposite each other. So we need the same factors. We need a three factor and a two factor, and a three factor and a two factor, if we have all these different factors, it's just not gonna work out.
when we're solving equations, like I said, until we get to like section 2, what, 10.5, I think it was. I don't know if you watch me look that up. Around 10.5, I think we're going to learn this other method, which is, is not a rule that we need a zero on the other side of the equation. But until then, which is a while from now, it's a good rule of thumb, get a zero on the other side of the equation. How will we get a zero on either side of the equation? However we do it. Zero on the left side, zero on the right side, it, it won't matter. That'll be good. Add 108 yeah. both sides. Add 108. Okay. You know, we're, we're in a section about difference of squares. So we want to see it as a difference. So we'll just write it as 108 minus 3t squared. So now it looks like this guy here. Because usually the variable comes first and then minus the number. But it could be this way too. The thing is though, this, this is not a square number. This is not going to factor in there into squares. So what do we do? What's, what's rule, or what, what's step zero always of factoring? Huh? That's a reminder this was coming up after school. I don't know cool. why it's coming up now. So what's that what's that re, uh, that rule zero, step zero that, that comes before anything else when you're factoring polynomials? I reminded you of it. Has to be zero? No, that's not for factoring. Oh, sorry. The thing that I want to do, the first thing I always want to check for if I'm gonna factor a polynomial. Do they have anything in common? Do these two have anything in common? Did you know how to check and see if the number is divisible by 3? See if it's divisible by 9 first. By what? To see if it's divisible by 9 first. I think that's even harder. <laughs> There's a little trick for seeing if, if a number is divisible by 3. Look for any number at all. If I add the digits 1 plus 0 plus 8, I get 9. And 9 is divisible by 3. So 108 is divisible. Works every time. So I add 1 plus 0 plus 8, we get 9. 9 is divisible by 3. So I know it's worth my time figuring out what 108 by the So what if it was like 2, 2, 4? Wait, 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 oh. wait, 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 5, yeah, 5. Right. 2, 2, 5? Yeah, would that five, be? 6, 7, 8, 9. 9 is a number that's divisible by 3, so this will okay, be right. divisible by 3. Just check and it doesn't have to add to 9. It can add to any number that's divisible by 3. So it can right. add to 24, it can add to, to 15, yeah. any number that's divisible 24. The digits could add up to 24. Oh. Oh, okay. So, like 888. 8 plus 8 plus 8 is 24. So I know 888 is divisible by 3 because 24 is divisible. I don't know what that I don't know what the other factor is, but I know that it's divisible by three. Eight 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 divided by three. Two hundred and ninety-six. Two hundred and ninety-six times three is eight hundred. Uh two hundred and twenty-five divided by three, we know it's divisible by three because we just did this. Seventy-five. Oh. There's a little tricks to this. For almost all the numbers. Uh like seven has one, but it's a lot more complicated. Anyway. Uh, here we go, 108 divided by 3, I guess we should have done that when we had the calculator out. 108 divided by 3 is 36. And with, since it's an equation that said equals 0, I actually I don't have to factor out the 3 like I did for number 19 because it's not an equation. So I can't just like divide it by 8 because it would be different than it started. But I can divide this by 3 and... Since it's in the equation, I can divide the other side by 3, and that's nice because, because 0 divided by 3 is what? Zero. 0. So it comes out to be 0, and this turns out to be a number that I forgot, 36 minus t squared, because 3t squared divided by 3 is just 1t squared. Now 36 minus t squared, these are now both squares factor. 
How does this factor? Well, the t actually comes second. Six. So actually, six t. minus t and six plus t. Yeah. Oh man, that's close. I had t in there. And then we solve the equation by saying, here's a number times another number that equals zero. So one of them, this one has to be zero, or this one has to be zero. One of them has to be zero. This one. If this one equals zero and I add t to both sides, I find that t is six. If you subtract six from both sides, t is negative six. That's why the answer on the answer uh, page or whatever is it says this. It really means there's two answers, a positive six and a negative six. Those are the two solutions. Questions about that? I'm going to ask you to factor and we're going to ask you to solve an equation in the review. Any questions about factoring or solving equations this way? Difference of squares? That's question five. Okay. No questions? Let's take out a piece of paper. Okay, number one. Factor 9x squared minus 16. It's a difference of squares. These are both squares. The factors as. 4, 3x minus 4. So if you're not sure, what can you do? Always to make sure that it is factored correctly. Not solved. I don't know how you explain You do like 3 times 3 and all of them multiply them together. But it doesn't something. Uh, double distribution. That's what we call it. Double, double, double distribution. There's a one number has to be equal to both of them. Right. One number has to be equal to like 3. That's if I wanted to factor something out of both of these before I factored it as a squares. Remember, this, this, this is a special pattern because there's no middle term. It's, there's zero x's here, uh, zero x to the firsts. So it, since it's a, an interesting and fairly unique pattern, you'd think there'd be a fairly interesting and unique way in the way, something in the way that it factors. We have our almost two identical uh, factors, except for the middle sign is different. It's the numbers being the same. We get a three times a four and a three times a four. We get it twice, but one of them is negative and one of them is positive. That's what causes the, the middle term to, when we collect like terms, go to zero. It's just, there's nothing there. So it's the square root of the first plus the square root of the second times the square root of the first minus the square root of the second. This one here is a difference of squares. So first we factor it, 4x plus 5 times 4x minus 5 equals 0. If you're ever in doubt and want to make sure that you factored it correctly, just multiply it together, double distribution. Uh, and now 4x plus 5 times 4x minus 5 equals 0. We get, a we get a product of 0 when we multiply these together. So one of these things, either that one or this one, have to be equal to zero. Solving for x, we add five to both sides. We get four x equals five. Divide by four, five fourths. Uh, oh, that was supposed to be a plus. So we should have subtracted five from both sides and got a negative five fourths. Here we add five to both sides to get four x equals five. Uh, divide by four on both sides, x equals a positive five fourths. You might have noticed between this example and the one that we solved here, you get a positive and a negative six. And that other one from the front page, a positive and a negative three, when you solve uh, an equation that has a difference of squares in it, you wind up getting a positive and negative version of the same answer. Because the factors are the same, except for that middle sign is the opposite. All right, so last time we'll talk about factoring, section 9.8. And uh, just kind of puts everything that we've learned together. Oh. Uh, 
Uh, let's start with. Is there going to be anything new? Yeah. In a sense, in a sense there is, but but also in a way, no. The new thing will be that sometimes we have we have powers of x that are bigger than two. Oh, okay. But only really special cases that we can factor in ways that we've already used. Whether it be digits of squares, factoring by grouping, just factoring something out that they have in common. Or like, in like x cubed or something like that instead of x squared. There might be like an instance where there's an x cubed and we're able to factor it with, uh, in that case, I would, I would guess probably be factoring by grouping, which we've done. The factoring by grouping is like, we've done it tons of times, whether you realize it or not, when we do the big AC method with the x and we, I always color one yellow and one group purple and we factor it by those two groups. That's factored by group. But since we just did difference of squares, let's look at a difference of squares that has a little more to it. Okay? So, like, let's try to make this work 81x to the fourth minus um, 16. 16. Definitely want to have some paper out, write your notes down. Photographic memory. Yeah. Think about it. All right, so what we have, this is an x to the fourth, so, but it's also a square. This is a square, this is a square, this is a square. It's a difference of squares. It should be 9. Here's the first bit that might have tripped you up, but I don't think it did. 9x squared plus 4 times 9x squared minus 4. Back to this difference of squares. Good? Yeah. Makes sense? Okay. So the square root of 81 is 9. Square root of x squared is x, uh, of x to the fourth is x squared. The square root of 16 is 4. We factor the difference of squares. But does anybody notice anything about the factors we have now? still Which what? Both of them? Well, one of them. So we can factor this one? How do we factor it? If that's true, I should be able to distribute the 3x here, get 9x squared, so far so good. But 3x times 2 is 6x. This is not 6x. Good try. But these don't have anything in common. If these, just to let you know, if these had anything in common, these would have had something in common we would have factored out to start with. So if, you're, if this factor has, if these two guys have something in, fa in, in common, we could have found something in common in the first place to factor out before we even started. What if I said, let, let's just go to another page. What if I said factor this? Could you factor that? How does this factor? 9x squared minus 4 factors as 3x minus 2 times 3x plus 2. What's this? It is 9x squared minus 4. What, we, what we're looking at here is like if I had uh, um, 12, okay? And I'm factoring 12 just like I'm trying to factor this polynomial. I might factor it as 6 times 2, right? But 6 can be factored as well as 2 times 3. So I could write 12 as 2 times 3 times 2. Polynomials work the same. If one of the factors can be factored, we factor it. It's factorable. So we have this 9x squared plus 4, which is not factorable. There is no way to factor a sum of squares. But this is a square, this is a square, this is a square, this is the difference of squares. So it factors, just like you told me on the other page, 3x, sorry. 3x plus 2, 3x minus 2. The factor is even more, just like we can factor the 6 even more. Is this so And yeah, sure. So I love how you just agree with it, too. I think it's more like the culmination of centuries of mathematical studies. Or sorcery. You have a question? So, if 
for these, yeah. is it just simplify like one half of it and you just kind of ignore the other? Because the thing that caught me is that those won't equal. <laughs> You'll get 3x, but then you only get the one to do it. Like, do we not like add these together? Do we just ignore it? I mean, they should get multiplied together, but those two yeah, multiplied together will only that's what give saying, you only that. Yeah. So we need so to bring this guy along. Okay, so just like we, just make we don't say that 12 is 2 times 3, it's 2 yeah. times 3 times still this okay, 2. So we just make another like version of it, except it's kind of. So it's, just a, it's just another, it's a factor that is still part of it. Like, yeah, it's for like this factor three. comes along, this factor broke into these two factors, yeah. but this factor is still there. Okay, so that's why I need to put that for this factor and break it down to what it actually is. Oh, this one won't break down. You can't factor this one. You can only factor this one. That's true. All right, so this one won't factor. So it's kind of right. Sure. You just so ignore the other one. <laughs> yeah, you can, like, okay. you don't have to. Just like I, I, right. I ignore the two as I factor the six. Okay, I thought we had to do both, so this threw me off for a while. Uh, yeah, like, I'm I see. gonna get this. I see. So right. you, you don't have the right answer written. You need that factor yeah. there. All right. So write it. Sorry. Okay. So I was right, except the part that I was talking about is twenty eight. All right. The math gods are pagan. Are they? Okay. Um, so watch out when you when you factor a difference of squares, maybe there's another difference of squares hiding inside of it. Not always, but sometimes. Just like area fifty one. Yes, exactly <laughs> like that. With no difference whatsoever. Okay, so x cubed plus 3x squared plus 5x plus 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 5x plus 15. Look at that, there's. We've been factoring. We've been doing that this entire. Doing what? Because what we're going to do here is factor by grouping, which I, I've mentioned that name a couple of times, but not a lot. We're going to group it. Group this group here and this group here, Your group there. just like group. when we did the, uh, the AC method. So that might be enough for you. Give it a, give it a try. Uh, follow the example of the AC method and continue that problem out. In the yellow group, we are looking for that, that, that factor that they have in common. Do they have anything in common? Uh, x squared. squared. An x squared, very good. Not just an x, but an x squared. <laughs> leaves, leaves with x plus 3. Then in the lavender group, use lavender. what do those two have in common? 5, x plus 3. The crucial part of factoring by grouping is that this factor and this factor are exactly the same. Shame. Okay. It's a shame. For the, I don't know how many times it is that I'll explain this. Not, not to shame you, right? But once again, I'm going to explain why the next step looks the way that it has. Okay. It's not magic. It's not shifting around. It's not like a. A Rubik's cube where you just move stuff to other places. No, that's actually not no. A Rubik's cube, okay, is a thing of algorithms. Yeah. yeah. So it's not just a simple algorithm so where actually this slides here so and this slides you know, over there. Don't it's, it's on the Rubik's okay. cube. You grew up with that thing. Your best friend. <laughs> <laughs> so we're ready to move on to this explanation. Okay. So what we're about to do since Branson mentioned it earlier, like this next step is just like the reverse of double distribution. More specifically, it's just the reverse of the first step of double distribution. So this looks like the result of multiplying one parentheses by another, which means I'm going to undo that by maybe drawing it a little bit better. Taking out this common factor of x plus 3. This x plus 3 is going to come outside of the parentheses, just like the x cubed came outside of the parentheses here, and the 5 came outside 
of the parentheses here, the x plus 3 that you have to come out of the parentheses. We have x plus 3 times, I'm going to divide out this x plus 3, I'm left with x squared. I'm going to divide out this x plus 3, I'm left with plus 5. x plus 3 times x squared plus 5. Got him. So I can't stop you from just sliding things around like one of those sliding things around puzzles. <laughs> You know what I'm talking about? Oh, you mean like no, no those ones that you go here and then you got those where you got like, like, like a picture and yeah, you slide yeah. them all. Like you got to like, there's the red block over here, exit over here, and then there's like a bunch of blocks and you got to Oh, that's a different one. one. I've seen some of those. Hey, you. Don't come with the actual picture. They leave like a space in the That's always like annoying me so much. Well, you got to have an empty space. Yeah, I Well, I know why, but it just annoys me. It's like, it's not a complete picture. Like there's a chunk of missing of this picture. Sorry. It's just, I don't know, it just feels awful. Oh, oh that one. Oh, okay, or yeah, like rush hour, like it's yeah. the car. Yeah. So it's not like that. So it's very much mathematical, and there's definitely math all over the place with the sliding puzzles, the Ruby's Cube, and try the hour, or rush hour, or whatever it's called. I never understand yeah. it. So you factor out the x plus 3, left with x squared plus 5. I cannot stop you from sliding things around and not understanding what I just said, but I have to. Have to decrease the math. There we go. So there's a factoring by grouping. Here's a little hint. Try factoring by grouping when you can make two groups. Right? So it would not be possible to make two groups, uh, like at least right off, if there were three terms. You've got to have four terms. That's why we do all that work with the AC method so we can get two groups of two. Right? Then we can factor them separately. And that's what we do here. It's already four terms which enables us to, to break it up into two groups and do as we've done so many times before already. Yeah. Which is the advantage of having learned that method over the, it's another advantage over the um, guessing and checking method because now we're just ready to back to my grouping here. Is that all we're doing? It's not even something new. Why did you do that? What, what has to happen? Um, once we stop learning, that will be all we learned, right? Well, the reason that might I mean, I asked this thing so that way I could start on my own. I already ran out. Uh, I mean, no, all we're going to be doing is factoring <laughs> and solving equations, just like we've been doing. I just want to make sure you get, you get a, a good look at all the different things that you can do, all the different approaches. Oh, I, I stole one. What are you saying? That was all up there. Well, yeah, as far as factoring and solving equations, that is all. Um, you swallow. <laughs> I'd say, to sum it all up, so far what we've learned, I'd say step number zero, okay, or to number the steps, first step would always be factor out, factor out common factors, meaning like if all three or four or five terms, however many of them, have a two in there, a factor of two, you know, a factor of 2x, like factor that all out to start with. Uh, so like, for example, H squared. Anything else? Uh, two. 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 Yeah. Two. Oh, yeah, 25. Two H squared, yeah. So 25 H squared minus, minus what? Two H squared times this will be negative two H squared and negative one. Always. Step zero. Just try to make it a, a 
utmost importance factor out anything they have in common. And then, how would this be factored? Yeah, just two terms. There's no middle term there. Um, difference. No, it's not really a difference. No. That's just like a one. That's a difference. Minus oh. difference. Oh. Is okay. one a square? No. Is there a number it's that can multiply by itself to be one? One times one is one, so one is the square root of one. Right? And this is a square as well. 5 squared, h squared. It's just different to squares. What other number is the square root of itself? What other number is the square root of itself? Oh, zero? Zero. Okay. And zero is zero. So after factoring out any common factors, uh, let's shrink this down, and put some more advice below that. Whoa. Just that. Oh, no. Just so you can read it. Uh, so like then step number one after that, I would look for one of these options, you know, is it, uh, if it has four terms, it has four terms. What did we just learn we could try? Huh? It has four terms. One, two, three, four terms. How did we factor the one that we just factored that had four terms? AC. And not AC, exactly. The AC comes from the from multiplying the first number by the last number. We don't have to do all that, right? Here it is. We didn't have to do any AC stuff, multiplying numbers together. We just right away took those four terms and grouped them. We just grouped them into two groups of two. And so that's what we call grouping, factoring by grouping. So four terms. I can guarantee at this level right now in algebra one, at this point in, in your math careers, if there are four terms, you're only going to be able to factor it if it's a, if it is possible to factor by grouping. Which is the only method we have to approach that. Otherwise, we'd have to know how to divide polynomials. Like, we need to know how to divide numbers. Like, can I divide this polynomial by this polynomial? There's polynomial long division. We'd have to know the, all sorts of stuff. The remainder theorem. We don't know any of that stuff. So if it has four terms, it's grouping. It has three terms. Well, then it's a quadratic. Then we're going to factor either the easy way or the AC method, or guessing and checking. Right? It's either going to be 1x squared plus bx plus c, which kind of like the beginner level of, of factoring quadratics, or it's going to be uh, a, something other than 1. AX squared plus BX plus C. Which this would be the AC method that we learned. And this one would just be regular, we'll just set it up, right? Just X, X, figure out what multiplies to C and adds to B. And then, and then. if there are two terms, Really, the only thing we know about factoring two terms is a difference of squares. So looking at the number of terms is going to be a helpful way to decide what to do next. How, how am I going to factor this, this quadratic and move forward? Four terms grouping, two groups of two. If it's three terms, then uh, it's just a regular old quadratic that we spend a lot of time factoring. If it's two terms, we've got a difference of squares. Okay. Remember, all of this is preceded by factoring.
train out anything they have in common. If you don't do that, it's going to be significantly more difficult if you don't take that factor out that they all have in common. Um, One more example, and then I'm going to finish this one up. Remember, the first thing that I'd always say is to see if all four of these have what? Factor in common. Do all three, oh, sorry, all four of these have something in common? Yes, they do. What do they have? A two. A two. Anything more? Uh, they all have a, a, have a This eight. one doesn't have an eight. No, they don't. Um, but they all have four. a C. This one doesn't have a four either. Right. Two is the most I can pull out of this one, so it's the most I can pull out of all of it, as far as numbers go. But they also have a C. So that's going to leave me with a C to the third plus uh, two C squared minus four C minus eight. Right. Now inside the parentheses, like if I factor something out, I can still see if this is factorable. Can I factor this? Well, it's got four terms, so I'm going to turn my old pal factored by grouping. I'll highlight it. I won't be able to see it anymore. Because then something has four, because it's in the black. Then we'll highlight it. Group to the left, group to the right. We've got 2c times. What do these two have in common? C squared, so we have C squared times C plus two. Yeah. And then we have, what do these two have in common? Uh, two, no, four, sorry. A four, but as negative. I have said, if the first negative. thing's negative, factor out a negative. Negative four, leaving us with C plus two. If, if I do factor by grouping, if these two parentheses are not identical, then it means one of two things. You can't possibly factor it. Oh, or you did it wrong. Or we just can't. Oh. That would be the first option I just said. But it's not that option. It can be factored because you just saw me do it. They are identical. Okay. And so inside Ooh. here, we factor out the C plus 2 from both of these. Here it comes outside, outside of the parentheses, comes the C plus 2 factor. And it's left to C squared minus 4. Right. And then one last thing that can be factored. You see anything else that can be factored? This can't be factored. It's just a two c. Two and four. What's that? No. That's c squared. This is c squared. Yeah, they both have a c, so you can factor them out. This one and this one. No, that one and the other C is it. Oh, this is, well, they don't have a factor of C. Because a common factor means it's multiplied. This is not C times no, so, uh, this is C squared minus. Another one could be, uh, I'm calling it square, but the four could be made over to. Uh, so these, this, this is a C squared minus a two squared. It's a difference of squares. Always watch out for that little tricky leftover difference of squares. C plus 2 times C minus 2. There it is, factored all the way as far as it can be factored. 2C times C plus 2. C plus 2 times C minus 2. I can write this a little differently because this is a C plus 2 and this is a C plus 2. C plus, C, C plus two times C plus two squared. That's right. C plus two squared times C minus two. So I'm going to write a little 
shorter. And they can put it in the smaller box. Same I was going to ship that, that final answer off to somebody. Be nice to take up a little less space. That's what the pipe is for. Trees get the light for this. Are farms and trees raised just to be paper? It's kind of a failure, actually. 